Merging with simulator in three, two, one. Um, one thing, one subject <laughs> I was excited to talk to you about because this has been uh, up for debate, up for debate for quite some time now. Uh, is the whole area uh, around HHC, the alt cannabinoid, and drug testing and mm. Just so like a basic overview and then I'm going to let you correct me and fill in the gaps because you were obviously very fucking educated when it comes to these things and I love it. But from what I understand with HHC, right? So if you were consuming HHC by itself and uh, you're not consuming any other cannabinoid products, um, it can make you fail. It, it will make you fail like say an instant cup test, a dipstick test, but then I've heard reports of people sending it off to the lab and passing that way because apparently it metabolizes into um, something other than THC. Um, but of course, there's all sorts of nuances with that, like what you were talking about earlier, how a lot of these labs are faking their, you know, uh, certificates of analysis and so say you're smoking HHC, but it's got a certain percentage of, say, either Delta-8 or Delta-9 THC, that could build up in your system and lead to a positive for THC. I mean, could you, could you comment on the whole HHC and drug testing thing? Yeah, yeah, because this has been, you know, of interest to a lot of folks. Um, I was actually, when I was making HHC, we were able to make non-detect Delta-8 and Delta-9 HHC. So according to our analytical equipment, there was no other cannabinoids in there other than HHC. <clears throat> and I provided some of that product to a third party researcher who wanted to find out if you know, it would pass a drug panel. And they had somebody who had been sober and I don't know the details of, you know, how, you know, careful they were in their study. I didn't, I just kind of talked to them about it anecdotally and provided the material, but they got back to me a couple months later and they were like, well, HHC definitely does not pass a drug test. And that was, you know, off of non-detect product. I don't know what types of, uh, tests they were doing. I don't know if they did a dip cup and, you know, a lab test, but I do know that the metabolite that they usually test for is either 11 hydroxy THC or 11 carboxy THC. And those molecules that are generally what are screened for in the drug tests, it's kind of unknown whether or not those are also metabolites of HHC in the body. Um, it seems like they would not be because of the saturated carbon ring um, and those metabolites having an unsaturated carbon ring. But it could be that the metabolites that are created by HHC are close enough to be identified as the same metabolites. Uh, so there, it really isn't known. Um, maybe somebody's doing research right now, but uh i would say to anybody looking to subvert a drug test not to rely on pure hhc consumption to do so um i think it'd be you know i've known people to have success with those you know cleansing drinks that halt that like mask your metabolites for a certain period of time but uh or of course abstinence is you know the most foolproof but i don't think that there's too much promise for HHC subverting drug tests. Right. And even if it does for right now pass the lab, like I think it's GCMS or LCMS tests. Cause I've, I've read a bunch of anecdotal reports on Reddit of people who say that it does, but even if it does for the time being, chances are that they will eventually just screen for the metabolite that HHC produces too, you know? Um, and you're right. I mean, uh, people can't rely on 
smoking HHC and passing a drug test. I think that's one of the things that whenever it first came out and became pretty popular, I remember that was uh, one of the big shticks about it is people wanted to know, like, can I smoke this and stay undetected? And as time went on, people were just kind of like, well, not really. I mean, like, kind of, maybe, but we're we're not sure. Like, gamble at your own risk. Um, and when it comes to something like, uh, you know, your employment or if you're taking drug tests for the government, um, you're you're better off either, like you said, abstaining or doing the dilution method. Or if it's a employment drug screening, doing the substitution method. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like to be a little more optimistic and think that maybe down the road, not too far down the road, cannabinoids are not going to be an issue in terms of employment. You know, I think it's a matter of time before the federal government changes the scheduling of cannabis and its cannabinoids. Um, so I, I hope that things change and in the meantime, I've personally taken the stance that I'm not going to change my drug use for a job. And I know that not everyone has that privilege, but that's kind of my like bullish attitude towards it. I think it's ridiculous for that to be a stipulation of employment. Um, it, it really bothers me. But uh, again, like, you know, not everyone can, can make that choice for themselves, but I hope that someday they can. Right. And when it comes to these employment drug tests, the problem with them is that it's not testing for current impairment due to the substance. It's testing like, cause you know, everyone knows weed stays in your system longer than just about anything else. And it's, you know, it's fat soluble. Um, so, you know, you take this employment drug screen and if you smoked weed, you know, two and a half weeks ago, when you were at home by yourself in the afternoon, you know, you could potentially not get the job or get fired for that. It's like, I, that was a substance that I chose to consume on my own time. Um, it'd be one thing to be like, all right, you're working around heavy machinery and we got to make sure people stay safe. And if there's an accident, then like we can blood test you for, you know, THC, I, I understand that in terms of like liability issues and things of that nature. But, uh, yeah, I think it's absurd as well, man. People, the way I see it and, you know, uh, I understand too that not everyone has this privilege and I completely get that. But the way I see it is that, yeah, I'm with you. I don't, I don't want to work for an employer who's going to look at, well, he has THC in his system. He, he can't work for us. It's like there's so much more to a person than what, you know, drugs they choose to consume. Like, uh, it, there is, uh, it, there's more to a person, there's more to what someone's saying than just the language they're using. You know, like when you interview at a job, you, you can get a general feel for people and a, you know, a vibe from them. Um, uh, and I would way rather, if I was an employer, go off the dude who I think is, you know, would get along well with everybody who is, you know, a, a self-starter, who is, a, you know, passionate about the mission you got going on, yada, 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 over, well, this guy smokes weed. So, like, yeah, it's, 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 it's a weird residual thing that is left over from, you know, our society having demon yeah demonize these things for so long um but we're living me and you were lucky enough i guess to live in the time where we're going to get to see that all turn around and i'm i agree i think it's just a matter of time before it's not it's not something that you know your employment hinges on yeah have you ever uh read pcal oh uh uh by shulgin yeah no i haven't read it no i've okay. heard of it well to anybody listening to this the it's either the prelogue or the forward of that book is Shulgin's uh, argument against the war on drugs and drug testing and all this stuff. And it's the most succinct and professional and readable argument against the war on drugs I've ever seen. And I highly recommend to anybody who 
is interested in that topic to, to just read that prelog and it's available on Arrowhead, um, so you can get it online. But yeah, it's it sums up my feelings very well and um, I'm glad that that's out there. So highly recommend. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out, man. I've uh, I've wanted to read that book for a long time. I don't know why I haven't yet. Uh, I got a whole bookshelf over here of of stuff that I've started, and some of it I haven't finished, some of it I have. Uh, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get that one. I, he also has uh, T call too, the tryptamines I have known and loved, right? Yeah. And I, uh, have you Have you ever read the Doors of Perception, Aldous Huxley? I like. He he does it a little more poetically, but I like his argument or what he kind of says about the whole war on drugs and drug use. And he basically says that the answer isn't by closing off current chemical doorways. It's it's by opening up new, less harmful ones. Um, yeah, I love that. I, I I love that book. But uh, 